This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this section, we're going to take a look at creating planes using a variety of references within your part. To do this, I just created this simple little part. I know that's not really a good part. All I did was just create a couple different feature types so that you can have reference. So start off. To create a plane, a couple different ways you can access the tool. In the Feature Manager, in the Features tab, you have Reference Geometry. Here you can select planes. You also have from the menu, Insert Reference Geometry, Planes, or my favorite, the shortcut bar, Plane. After selecting the Plane command, you'll see the Plane Property Manager. It prompts you for three references. Although many times you don't need more than one. So the first way we're going to create a plane is by using the coincident. If we just select anywhere in the part, just a vertex, the first reference creates a plane. Even though we see the plane preview being shown here, it's still not enough to be able to create the plane. In fact, if we click on the green check mark, it will say that the input is incomplete. There's still not enough information. So we'll need to select a second reference. A second reference can be an edge, a line, a face, another plane, or another vertex. So for the second reference, I'll just select on this line. This creates the plane perpendicular to this line with the origin at this point. So when I go to create a sketch, you'll see the sketch origin is at that first reference. Another type of plane or another type of reference that we could use is parallel. So if we start a new plane, maybe we'll want a plane that uses this coincidence here, but is parallel to this face. Click the green check mark and we have a new plane here. You notice this time that the origin is not based on here because it actually takes from the origin of the part. The origin of the part is projected up onto that plane. Another type of plane, which you've already seen here with this, is the perpendicular. Once again, we could select a point and a line. We have it there that's perpendicular. Normally for straight lines, you might not need to do this, but it does come in handy when you're doing things like sweeps. So if we want to create a plane, that is perpendicular to this curve. We can do that. We could create a sketch on this plane, but you'll see from the side that this is not perpendicular to this face. So we do have to create a sketch for that. So now we can create a sketch on there. Comes in handy if you want to do something like a router tool. So another type of plane is a tangent. When I say another type of plane, these are all regular 2D planes, but it's just another way of creating it. The tangent creates a plane that's tangent to a circular or cylindrical face. We can create one specifically on this cylinder to be able to do a cut extrude going through. Once again, we don't have enough geometry information and it's asking for a second point. Depending on the feature that you use, you could find a point on your sketch. Incidentally, as you just saw there, I accidentally grabbed a couple extra reference points. I don't need them. If that happens to you, just right click in here, say delete, and you go back to where it was. So I'm trying to grab here a point and it's not letting me. So I can do a couple different things. Actually, ahead of time, created a sketch. So I can have enough information to create this plane. Using just a regular sketch here, I now have this plane that's tangent to this face at a specified angle. And if I need to change this angle, I just change the sketch. It also works with other points in your model. So if I still want to have a plane tangent to this face, but the angle be set by this feature here. 
So what happens if this model changes in any way, that plane will go along with it. Well, I'll make some room here, select these, and then I'll go ahead and delete these planes. Next, we'll create a plane at a specified angle. Maybe we want a plane coming off of this face at 30 degrees. Select the face or another plane. And then a second reference would actually be an edge or a line. The line can be a sketch line that you create, or in this case, an edge. Now that you have enough information for that, you'll get more options here in the feature manager. So we can set the angle here to be 30 degrees, and you'll see the plane is created at 30 degrees. Flip, we'll flip it to the other side. If we wanted to get a couple different planes, all from the same area, we could change the instance count here. And they'll all be set to 30 degrees. So go back and delete those. Another one that comes in handy is the offset. Offset creates a plane that's parallel to another plane or face, offset at a specified distance. I like to pre-select my faces, but you don't need to all the time. It just makes it easier for you to figure things out later. So since I created this plane right now, by default, it's coming up at 0.1 distance. I could change that distance either by moving up and down or set a specified distance. Flip. We'll change which side of the face it's offset on. And once again, you can add an instance count here. This comes in handy if you're doing lofted surfaces or lofted features. So each one of these planes, you can create a separate sketch, such as a section for a loft. So we have the three planes here the three default planes, but what if I want a plane that's halfway through here? Or maybe one that goes halfway through the entire part. Depending on how you model your part, it does happen from time to time that maybe you have it off to the side, but you want to have a plane right down the middle so that you can be able to create additional features that are mirrored on each side. So we'll create one by selecting this face. In the second reference, we'll select this face. There is no need to select anything else. It already knows that it's a mid plane. So now this plane is exactly right down the middle. And if we change the width of the part, the plane will always be right down the middle. 